Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. <laughs> uh, it lasted two episodes. So far, so good. Last episode, uh, we talked about my life. Right? Yeah, and, I think and we settled it. Uh, the song, maybe. My <laughs> life, no. Um, uh, my life, just one of my absolute favorite songs. Um, and then... Uh, we decided that the way this show will work is then the other person will pick next week's song. And Alex picked Big Man on Mulberry Street. That's right, which I did um, because I have always liked that song a lot um, with no consideration when I uh, picked it, what the lyrics were like. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is going to present a challenge because then I went back and looked at the lyrics and they're very repetitive. Yeah. But I think there's something in there. I did too. I generated some thoughts about it. So that's good. That's uh, good. That's all you need. I will, I'll just, before we get into it, I want to say my first impression of the song is I like the big bombastic opening yeah. musically. And you mentioned that it's jazz. To me, it's Broadway. It's a Broadway yeah. song. It could be the centerpiece of any number of musicals that came out in the 90s that were about gumshoes <laughs> and th those kind of musicals that were very trifles, absolute trifles, about nothing but very enjoyable. Yeah, dance numbers. Big dance numbers. Yeah, exactly. Where they were like, we're gonna harken back to the good old days, but and and but wonderfully so. I just love the big opening, and it's Billy Joel going, "Hey, Dicks, just so you know, I'm a musician," and he's very good. <laughs> yeah. Um, you had a story, uh, and, I, and we wanted to save it for the air on why on the other reason you picked this. The other reason I picked this is because. Um, I moved to New York like 16 years ago. I've you know, been a Billy Joel fan forever. And when I moved here, one of the fun projects for me was like going and spotting uh, the places that are mentioned in a lot of those songs that I grew up with. I think anytime anybody who grows up outside of New York, you all you see on TV is New York when you're right, growing yeah. up. Every show is set in New York. Um, you, you know the accent inside and out. Um, and then you move here and you're like, oh, it's real. <laughs> All these things are real. And uh, so I picked this one because it has multiple street names in it. Um, and I didn't for a long time know where they were. Uh, you know, Houston runs right across the middle of Manhattan. So it's pretty easy to spot Houston and Canal. Um, but uh, I figured out that like, oh, he's, it's all Little Italy. All the okay. streets, Mulberry Street runs right down the center of Middle Italy, oh, Little Italy. Um, and walking around, I went on a walk there with Sue and, um, you know, I made her kind of go around the block a few times until we hit, you know, all of them. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and it was just very funny to me how this song is about being a young, tough and like, uh, cruising these streets and, you know, trying to impress other tough guys. Uh, but if you go down there now, it's a full tourist trap. <laughs> um, just like, okay, Italian restaurants, a lot of the, not the best ones in the city, for sure. Those are definitely elsewhere. Um, it's a lot of places with, uh, they have the menus with the photographs. So you're like, oh, spaghetti and meatballs. What, what could that possibly be? Oh, there's a photograph. <laughs> uh, so you can get your head around it. And a lot of like gelato stands, which are also now everywhere. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but that's why I've never tried spaghetti and meatballs because it's too intimidating. I would go there. <laughs> <and find laughs> <Mr>. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so it's just very funny to me, this the image in this song of this guy like, you know, um, what's the line that made me laugh when I was reading it today? Oh, why do I throw myself into the night? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's very Batman. Yeah. 
you go down to Little Italy, you're not throwing yourself into the night. Yeah. I <laughs> By any stretch. You're throwing yourself into a $17 spaghetti and meatball dinner. Yes, and multiple stores selling tiny statues of liberty. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so that was the reason I picked this one. Is it? Uh, That's awesome. I know where all the stuff is. <laughs> and Mulberry Street is great. It's lovely to walk through Little Italy, and I'm sure. And I know that uh, in the day, and when you live in New York, there are a lot of older folks who live here who only want to talk about how great it was when it was shitty. Right. And it was like, it was cool. It was, like, you couldn't even go out at night. It was so dangerous. And I'm like, well, I, that doesn't sound great. But they, uh, you know, there's a romance about dangerous old New York. Yeah. And uh, Little Italy was like, there were mobsters there. And that's where they hung out. And I think that's where the, the Godfather scene, where he's walking through the festival of San Gennaro. Yeah. Uh, it all happened there. But like, it's, it's a very different world right now. Yeah, New York, um, for, for good and ill, I mean, for good and ill in just the sense it, those old people wouldn't be out on the street telling you that story. They'd be going, get inside. So <laughs> yeah. as much as they like that story, it's probably better that they can tell it to you. Yeah, the, uh, the survivors of it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, people do that a lot. You know, they, with anywhere you live, there's a, oh yeah, so great when I was a kid. Like I have a funny memory of living with my mom in a trailer. And one time it rained so much that our address moved because we floated. <laughs> and that's a great story. I right. don't, I don't need to be living in a trailer with my mom. <laughs> <laughs> no. And as much as that's funny, it's also like, oh, I bet the kind of life you live where you're, House moves during the rain, but there was a lot of other terrible things that were going on too. Yep, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. what was great was you were young and your body worked and things like that. <laughs> yeah. That's what these people leave out of their stories. They're like, yeah. oh, when I was in my 20s, walking around New York, it was dangerous. I'm like, yeah, but you could walk. Yep, <laughs> right, yeah. Like, here's one of my, here's my, my favorite example. Like, when you're young and you like to try different drugs or get, or get real drunk or whatever, Sure. Uh, here, here's a good drug to try at my age. Here's a, here's a drug I enjoy at my age. Uh, a little bit of ice cream too late at night. Oh, yeah. And then crazy fever dreams like I'm on Molly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So efficient. Yeah, I like uh, one extra coffee. Yeah, then I mean, you're like, oh, Part the day. Oh, do I need That's to call 911? <laughs> right? I'll go through like uh, I have the stroke symptoms posted somewhere. I'll go through <laughs> a couple times a month. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, well, we're going to get into the meat of the song, and I'm going to I'm going to let you take the lead because I did last time. But first, that my background. I, uh, I'm going to do this every week. Uh, my background <laughs> is a Civil War era cannonball. That's what that is. It's a Civil War era uh -huh. cannonball. Uh, right. What does that have to do with Billy Joel? What dumb reference is Jim making? That is a fine question. Well, I already tried uh, the, me the mention of Rebel in the song, but nope. that was not it. I'll tell you, it's not this song. It's a not song. <laughs> it's a song. My goodness. And it's the title. It's the title? Yeah, but it, the title's not Cannonball or Civil War. <laughs> Oh, well, there's a souvenir is one. Uh, boy, I could just run through all the albums, but we'll be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I really don't know. Well, I'll tell you what the cannonball is, and it's not a bullet, but it's like a bullet. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it's like a shot. My a shot. It's a big shot. shot. It's a big it's shot. A big shot. <laughs> that's really bad that's horrible right it's horrible it had to be a big shot it had to be <laughs> uh, uh, horrible right horrible pun um, but also a relevant mention because it's yet another song about somebody acting up 
Yep, and this time he's <laughs> calling him out. Yeah, this time it's not him, it's somebody else. Yeah. And he's upset about it. Usually it's him being uh, a tough guy and feeling cool about it. Yeah. Uh, driving through Bedford's die alone and whatnot. All right, speaking of which, let me pull up the lyrics. Pull up the lyrics. And uh, so this is from The Bridge, which was 86. Yeah. Late. Yeah, that's what it says um, on this here uh, website from The Bridge, produced by Phil Ramone. Uh, he's on his part. Yeah. All right, you uh, go first. Well, what occurs to me, should I just read some lyrics? Sure, let's go. Yeah, we'll go the first verse and I'll do a dramatic reading. Why can't I lay low? Why can't I say what I mean? Why don't I stay home and get myself into some boring routine? Why can't I calm down? Why is it always a fight? I can't get unwound. Why do I throw myself into the night? <laughs> For gelato on Mulberry Street. Um, I think it's interesting that it's all questions. Yep. Um, he's, I, I decided that this is a character because of like, kind of like what you were saying, that like, it's got a, like a Broadway vibe. For sure. And I think this is like, oh, I'm gonna, this is a character talking to himself. I don't think he is referring to William Joel. No, yeah, I, I would agree with um, that. With yeah. a complex character who can't lay low but also wonders why he can't lay low. Yeah. Um, but I like that it, it is clearly someone trying to decide whether or not to go out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I don't want to, but I feel this weird need. I feel like I have to. Yeah. I, when he gets to the lyric where he's, the line where he says, why can't I get into some boring routine? Oh, hello, cat. Oh, yeah, all, on our last episode. Yeah, and yeah. probably all of them. I hope so. Um, that is a beautiful Carlotta. Yeah. Oh, look at that cat. She's pretty good. She's a good sweetie pie. Yeah. Slept all day and then immediately <laughs> had to be on TV. Well, of course, you know, I uh, I slept all day, so there you go. Huh? There you go. Uh, there's the line where he goes, why can't I get into some boring routine? And I think thematically, <laughs> one of the things that's going on in this thing is he is he's saying, why can't I just chill out? Why can't I? And then he's immediately insulting the people who do. Yes. I gotta get into some boring routine. So he's immediately, you get that what he's saying is, I feel like he's saying, this is what people want from me. Why can't I do what people want from me? Which is be boring and shitty. <laughs> right. He's being one of those guys who goes, Hey, I think it's great that you have a nine to five. Right. I, I couldn't can't do, do that. that. Myself, I can't do that. Yeah, I gotta. I, I gotta I, live. I gotta feel know, alive all the time. I'm not like you. You know, sometimes <laughs> I'll just wake up and paint. Okay. <laughs> and he's a guy for sure who has drums in his apartment, but does not play the drums. Yes. He just bangs uh -huh. on him every now and then when the lady is over and goes, I'm crazy. I'm crazy like that. I'm working on something, man. And guys like you and me are mad that sometimes it works. Oh, yeah. No, it works plenty. <laughs> and I think we both have had like some version of this in our heads. I don't think like we're the tough guys going out at night, but we're like, why, why can't I be normal? Right. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Why can't yeah. I be normal? What am I doing? Yeah, I, I get that feeling at three in the morning at an Indian casino when I've do it. I've done the show already and I'm watching end game again. And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, and at that point I know the buffet's closed and my only real option is is more blackjack. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm a reprobate. <laughs> <laughs> a reprobate. Oh. All right, so let's go back to that. Let's look at that first thing again, see if we've, and why can't I lay low? Why can't I say what I mean? Even that just lyric is, sounds to me like a lot of people who say, ah, people can't handle me because I keep it real. And you're like, no, you're just. <laughs> yeah, no, you're just being a dick. Yeah, and you were saying, you have an opinion about stuff that you shouldn't have an opinion about. 
And that sometimes it's nice to shut your mouth. That's all. <laughs> That's all people want. Yeah. You know, like, you don't, you don't need to tell so-and-so that they've gotten fat or whatever dumb thing you had to say. <laughs> Let's see where what else, what else we got there. We got why don't well, I stay home? Why don't I stay home? Um, I'd also like I can't get unwound, which is like this is getting pathological now. Yeah, it's like um, clinical anxiety of some kind. Yeah, uh, I feel that lyric for myself for for sure. I'm sure. Yeah. You, oh, too. I can't get unwound either, but I'm not going outside. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In fact, you figured out the solution, which is I should. Uh... I'll uh, take Xanax or do yoga. Yeah. Or both. Maybe oh, that. that was my roommate handing me a note because he had an observation about Billy Joel because oh. I've made him listen to Billy Joel that I don't think he he's from Puerto Rico. So I don't think he ever used to listen to Billy Joel. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh there's this uh, thing that people say about music. And then we'll get back to the lyrics. I just want to share yeah, yeah, um, that all songs are, are four major categories of songs. Uh, songs about music in themselves are very common. Songs about love and romance, songs about religion, songs about politics are all very, are the very, and he noticed listening to a lot of Billy Joel. Oh, and then there's a minority of songs are about everything else. All the other parts of human existence are the minority songs. And he said, it's funny to him that a lot of Billy Joel songs are about the littler parts. And he uh, meant that as a nice compliment to Billy Joel because he certainly he has his romance songs too, who, of course. Sure. But then there's this song, which is just about some, some <laughs> nut. <laughs> just about like, uh, yeah, some cuckoo bird in a neighborhood. Yeah. Now that's a good observation. You and you and I have our our anxiety, and then we're like, we don't need to put the rest of the city in it. through that song. Staying home. Yeah, no, I feel like we both have learned that it doesn't work anyway. Yeah, like you just oh now I'm home again and I'm still unwound, or I can't get unwound. But now I I don't have thirty eight dollars that I had before. <laughs> Uh, I like the choice of thirty-eight dollars because it sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yep. M movie and some food on the way home. Yeah. And um, I also he goes on, which is funny to me because already it's eight lines that are almost identical, and then it goes on. I'm on the outside. I don't fit into the group. Now I ain't a bad guy. So tell me, what am I trying to prove? And then back to questions. Why can't I cool out? <laughs> it's just like uh, he went to the thesaurus. Why don't I button my lip? Why do I lash out? Why is it I always shoot from the hip? He has no self control. Yeah. And he's, um, and I guess most people who don't are upset about it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. He, uh, and why don't I button my lip is probably because he got popped in the mouth by a guy who said, you need to button your lip. Yeah, that's a weird. He got popped and he probably knows. Thing. He probably knows that it was a punch that was coming or deserved <laughs> or earned, let's say. Right. So now he's going, yeah, why don't I button my lip? <laughs> <laughs> why do I lash out? Why is it I always shoot from the hip? Again, shoot from, like the hip. shoot from the hip is something that only dicks say. Yeah. The hip. No, because nobody who shoots from the hip tells you stuff you were glad to hear. It drives me nuts when people do that. And I've been in relationships with people who will do annoying things uh, and then say, uh, that's just how I am. I know, I, I know you don't like it, but that's just how I am. I'm like, no, you have to control your behaviors. Yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to wear pants at work and stuff. I don't like pants. <laughs> Who likes pants? Um, but like, I, I don't know why I do that. Well, fucking work on it. Yeah. Figure something out. Well, you, it, uh, you're upsetting me. <laughs> why aren't you 
trying to correct that behavior that's so upsetting to me. Why don't you yeah. think out? And this guy at least is like, well, why am I like this? Well, that's true too. Our character could be, this could be our, us encountering our character at a pivotal moment where he finally, maybe this could be the first time. This could be him going, hey, wait a minute. Maybe I should be better. Maybe yeah. I should no. be better. It's uh, very weird. There's no precipitating event. He's immediately trying to figure it out. We don't yeah. know what happened. Um, that whole first part, um, if you listen to the song, is sung in a weird falsetto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Weird falsetto jazz voice that he could not handle. He sounds <laughs> kind of bad singing it. Um, I've never heard him. I've seen him in concert probably 10 times he's never done this song because I don't think he can. Yeah. Anyway. You know what? The singing of it honestly sounds a little bit like a demo tape. If you've heard a demo tape of a song, <laughs> right. and send it to the real singer. It does kind of sound that way. Yeah. It's like, well, when you give this to a girl to sing, it'll sound better, but I'll yeah. just do it for now. Uh, why can't I lay low? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then it gets like smooth jazz. It like changes tempo and everything immediately. And then it goes to like a cool bass line. Yeah, and it's Broadway the fuck out of it at that point. That's yeah, yeah. absolutely like there's a little soft shoe something going on and there's people in the background pretending to read newspapers for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if this was in uh, somebody's, in like a stage manager's binder, it would just have a lighting cue right now. <laughs> Shoot from the hip. Change all the lights. Yeah, all the lights. Boop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Red spot. <laughs> yeah. Full focus. Uh, one spotlight on the lady with the baby carriage in the red dress. <laughs> <laughs> I went to see um, this. All your observation is reminding me of uh, what is the show that I saw? A Bronx Tale. Okay. There was a musical version of the movie from the 90s yeah Matthew uh, Bronx Tale. um it's not great <laughs> but it is all those tropes and it is you know obviously it's new york and it's a lot of people doing new york accents hey where are you going with that newspaper there's a lot of that people uh, forgetting about stuff <laughs> and if you remember the movie it's uh, about the mafia and uh, there's a guy in the mafia who's very nice to this kid and right. sort of takes him under his wing and he's very cool. And uh, when I went to the show, which I only went to because my sister was in town and we needed a cheap ticket, sure. um, there were so many mafia guys there in the audience, like super, super clearly mafiosos oh. with their guma. <laughs> Wow. A lot of ladies in super tight dresses with cutouts down the side. Um, very, it was not like a Broadway crowd. It was like, oh, this is for them, kind of. Did they love it? They loved it. And uh, what's is, what is the guy's name who created it? I want to say Joe Montana, but it's not him. It's the other guy that always makes me think of Joe Montana. I don't know, but anybody who makes you think of Joe Mantegna is a good person. Joe Mantegna is great. Well, fair enough. I'm going to look it up while we're talking. Okay. Because he was there that night. Ah. And apparently is there almost every night. This show's been running for a while. Chaz Palminteri. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he was there at the show. And so the show is too long. It ends. There's lots of mafia applause. And then he comes out on stage and starts talking. You know, they love him. The go, crowd goes crazy for Chaz. <laughs> and he starts talking about his restaurant that he opened, which I think is a, like an Italian steakhouse somewhere. Um, and like basically encouraging all these people to come to his steakhouse. Oh, God, yes. The weirdest scene. 
but th this song would have like slipped right into that show and it would have been the best song in the show. Yeah. But yeah. it would have been pretty seamless. It's a perfect song for a particular kind of Broadway dance number. It's got, like you said, it's got the break where it changes tempo and it becomes groovy kind of, right? <laughs> right, and, yep. And he starts to sing different than he sung in the whole rest of the song and here i'll read those lyrics just to switch all right uh i cruise from houston to canal street houston very important oh, houston. yeah it's pronounced houston houston oh don't let the mafioso hear i said that <laughs> I cruise from houston to canal street a misfit and a rebel i see the winos oh i love this lyric yeah I see the winos talking to themselves and i can understand why is it every time I go out, I always seem to get into trouble? I guess I made an impression on somebody north of Hester and south of Grand. Right. So th those streets kind of box in Little Italy. Okay. <laughs> so it's Houston, yeah. Houston and Canal are the across east-west streets. I think Hester and Grand. Oh, no, that can't be right. They're all in Little Italy for sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, the idea that I made an impression on somebody north of Hester and south of Grand sounds like um, you, there's a mafia guy who likes you. Is it that he likes him or is he afraid he's going to get beat up? Oh, maybe. Is it a sarcastic made an impression? That's kind of how I feel. Like I've made, made an, an impression. impression. Yeah, I made an impression and there's guys you don't want to make an impression on. Oh, yeah. Well, he does just get into trouble in the previous line. So, yeah. yeah. And I do kind of like the lyric, uh, I see the winos talking to themselves and I can understand. I do. I would actually just genuinely like the idea of that lyric, which is just that you see the degenerates and you see the people on the outside and they're talking and they're running their mouth. But you know what? Boy, I get it. I get what's going on. I get what. <laughs> they make more sense than a lot of people who are supposedly regular and normal. And I agree that I agree with. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> we lived in Chicago at the same time for a while. Right. Yeah. And do you remember the guy that I think I used to say, everybody called him this. And then I'm like, I'm pretty sure just Paul called him this. There was this homeless guy. Paul said, people call him the sackcloth sage. And in retrospect, I think just Paul did. Huh. But he was this homeless black guy who was dressed in sackcloth because he didn't have money and he just had to stay warm. And he would say nice things to you. Oh, he would just kind of go like, uh, you know, you know, drink something warm or he'd say, be nice to your mother. He'd say shit like that. And then he wouldn't ask you for money, but I would notice that people would just kind of give him money sometimes. Sure. Like, cause he's not being awful. <laughs> right and because winos and drunks in chicago and new york are very different from la drunks and winos because people yeah. here who are homeless a lot of times are mean and awful i think because the weather's better so you don't have to be that good to survive <laughs> right yeah and, you can be like a pigeon in la basically you yep. can find food you'll stay warm and there are places to go Yep, you'll sleep on the pier, whatever will happen. Yeah. Be all right, where's it? Very name? desperate. Like right around this time of year, too, is when it gets pretty desperate in New York and Chicago. Yep, you're trying to figure out how to get by. One of the ways to get by is certainly not to be a prick. That's not one of the ways. <laughs> but I like that line a lot. He relates to the winos. And it, it shows, I think, at least there's some good in our main character. He's at least somewhere got a good heart even if he's be out being an idiot yeah although it's also um him saying like i'm an outsider i'm a rebel i'm a misfit i get these guys i'm the same as them oh so maybe it's that no you're not you have a home you have money Shut yeah up. so you're kind of a dick maybe yeah oh yeah i can see that for <laughs> sure yeah like Hey, I, I know where he's coming from. Now let me go to home to my warm house. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Because there's definitely a, a fair shade of people who, 
I remember the old Donald Trump. I don't know if you're familiar with this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a story before he became a monster. He was always kind of a monster of him walking down the street after he had gone broke in the eighties and telling his daughter, you know, that guy pointing to some homeless guy, that guy has more money than me making a point of just how in debt he was with bankruptcy. And that sounds like a cool story, but you're like, no prick. That guy don't have clothes. <laughs> Screw you. And if yeah. you think that if you actually experienced empathy, you could solve his problem and it wouldn't yeah. hurt you at all. So shut up. Shut up. Yeah. yeah, there's some of that. I feel like anytime with uh, Billy Joel lyrics, if you're not sure if he's being cool or being a dick, it, he's probably being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Lyrically, at least. Yeah. Um, there was a, an article in the New Yorker, maybe? I don't know where the article was, but it was about why people like don't like Billy Joel <laughs> and why he's sort of famously uncool. And uh, it centered around the theme of unearned contempt. Oh, and interesting. Okay. How many of his songs express this unearned contempt for people in situations? And uh, which I love. I'm like, good. <laughs> it's not. It's not your usual fare. Um, that's my friend's point, by the way. My friend who was like, my friend from Puerto Rico was just like. It, yeah. ain't, it ain't all songs about, uh, a, you know, lamenting a love you lost or being happy because of a love you got. It's some of it's just mad about a dumb job, mad about your neighborhood. Yeah, that's kind of great because. Or I, I like this boat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this boat is cool. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, I, I can't, I'm not going to tell you now because I can't wait to let you know what's for next week because it made me laugh because <laughs> um, i think we're both I, it feels like we're both of the same mind that any of the some of the bigger songs we're gonna wait on yeah 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 but uh the, there's one song of his that i just whenever it comes on i like listening to it because it's it doesn't make a lick of sense <laughs> <laughs> great uh, I was, by the way, if you ever want to, um, if you ever th say to yourself, I'm going to listen to all of the songs Billy Joel recorded in a row and binge, you cannot do that. You will die before that happens. People need sleep. He recorded a ton of music. Ton of music. And, and uh, yeah, thematically, it, <laughs> there's a lot of like, oh my God, there's so much complaining. <laughs> Even the love songs are complainy. Yeah. Ways, uh, or like backhanded compliments. Yeah. Well, she's always a woman. Oh, I love oh, that. That's a low bar. I love that song. <laughs> Great song. All of the reasons why you're like, boy, you should break up with her, but you're in love. <laughs> right. And that's but a real thing. Like, Oh, so it's not, very real. Yeah, yeah. I've been married um, 20... You've been married forever. 28. You were seven when you got married? Yeah, I'm a hillbilly, so... Okay. I, uh, what I always say is I did the, the super white trash thing, which is I met a girl who had uh, half sex with me once and went, well, that's enough. That <laughs> seems like enough. <laughs> we'll just do this forever. I'm getting better than that. Yeah, how could I... I you know, there couldn't possibly be more people anywhere else. Uh, so we got married and we've been married 28 years. And sometimes when I think about why, one of the main reasons I like my wife is because she's mean. Yeah. And she's got to, and sometimes I will tell people that and they don't get it. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, and you you and I, we, we can't relate on a certain level. We have different but needs. She's hilarious. She yeah. was a very cutting things and but funny and then but she'll be supportive when she needs to be <laughs> right but she will take you apart if you earn it oh yeah and and lord knows i have and do so <laughs> great lord knows <laughs> got my issues very symbiotic <laughs> yeah you've known me a while i've got issues <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean look at us it's halloween 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're doing. <laughs> oh, but you know what? Fuck everybody else. We're right. This yeah. Is what you should be doing. You fucking idiots on the street. I saw yeah. Oh my I God. went out with a buddy of mine to have sushi uh, yesterday, and it, the sushi restaurant did it well. We were outdoors. We were at our little table. There was plastic uh, barriers between us and the other tables. The waitress is wearing a mask. By the way, I've discovered that women in masks does it for me. I wouldn't have known. <laughs> I think a lot of people are learning that. I'm like, oh, I guess. Okay. I'm into that. Can that just stay even when the pandemic's gone? <laughs> um, <laughs> So we're having our little dinner. It's fine. Uh, I pay my bill. They give me a pen that goes into a thing to be sanitized. I walk by the next restaurant and there's just 30 or 40 fucking idiots. Yeah. In a, in a closed space, having a Halloween party. They're all in costume. None of them masks. Yeah. It's Halloween. You, it's your one chance. You could have been wearing a mask. Incorporate it. And they're doing the thing that people don't think about. And I understand people want normalcy, but also when was anything normal anyway? You dummies, nothing ever was. <laughs> there is no normal. It was all chaos and stupid. But yeah. there's, a, uh, there's a lady dressed as, she's dressed as a pink lady from Greece. Okay. And, uh, and she, she's clearly had a few drinks. Maybe she's probably not trashed, but she's definitely a little glassy. And so she's leaning into people. And I'm like, Man, that's what alcohol is doing to you. That's why people who don't understand, why can you open restaurants with sandwiches, but not bars? Because when you get two sandwiches in you, you don't lose your sense of allergies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm watching it happen. I'm on the second floor here. So I like, I can watch people in costumes going back and forth all night long. Yeah. Like, and great. Couldn't take one year. You're also, you're adults. This is not for you. You get to dress up all the time, anytime you want. It's New York. You can wear a costume every day and nobody will care. Yep. But can't take this away from us. Well, anyway. We're going to take it away from a percentage of you after tonight. Yeah. That's how it's going to work. That's how that works. Your cool costume will be guy in ICU. <laughs> we may be off track a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> our, well, our first comment on uh, the video I posted is I like this podcast because they sometimes talk about Billy Joel. <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right. So let's get back to our song. The uh, Mulberry sure. Street guy. We were south of Grand. And uh, go ahead and take it away, Alex. Yes. Yeah, so, and so in my small way. I'm a big man on Mulberry Street. I don't mean all day, only at night when I'm light on my feet. That's a definitely a line you just put in a song for a musical. Yeah. So that there could be a thing that happened, a pirouette or something. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a musical break. Everybody dances and there's guys in the back moving the steps. Yeah, that's, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yep. I just kind of like, the admission too. I like the admission that I'm a big man on Mulberry Street. Well, in this specific circumstance, I think I can yeah. be, I'm all right. I don't mean all day. Most of the day, nobody sees me. Yeah. At night, when I'm light on my feet, I'm a big man, but in a small way. What else have I got that I'd be trying to hide Maybe a blind spot I haven't seen from the sensitive side. You got me. I haven't seen from the sensitive side. Is he telling us he's a dick? I think so, yeah, because... Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, this feels like more of an admission that he's not very close to dealing with his issues because he's a big man on Mulberry Street, not during the day, but at night, he's this is maybe he throws bricks through windows and gets jewelry, you know, it's that right. kind of thing, or maybe just he picks fights because that's sort of what it feels like is that maybe whatever fights he's in, yeah, he fights he started, and he oh, light on my feet. Any of them. yeah, I you know, I saw a light on my feet and I thought dancing, but that is also a thing that they say about boxers, yeah. 
Um, yeah, and uh, and again, just the admission that I'm a big man. Well, not normally, because normally people ignore me. More normally, I'm not making much of a difference. But at nighttime, so yeah. he's being a big man in the worst way to be a big man, really. He's not being the guy who's like, oh, right. you know, who runs a shop, has a house. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, he's everything is closed when he's out. Yeah, um, maybe maybe he's why that other guy finally closed his shop. It might be. <laughs> maybe that's a part we didn't know. Oh my god, maybe, it's all connected. Maybe yeah, maybe they are all tied together. Ooh, let's see if that I mean, they are a little bit. Yeah. Um, why are but, they moving to LA to do stand? Man, his dick keeps throwing bricks through my window. Yeah, he's big man. <laughs> uh, plus there's all gelato shops moving in now <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, the sensitive side yeah I haven't seen from the sensitive side you don't have a girl There's, yeah or you're not cool to girls yeah you don't yeah. talk to them uh, yeah. if, he, if he does talk to women it's it's transactional probably yeah this is another character who's uh fully self-absorbed yeah and only wants to sing about his own thoughts about himself yeah um a little little glimmer of re of truth creeps in that is just but he doesn't why haven't i seen that oh. it's getting worse because hey, I'll, I'll go on please but you know, in my own heart, I'm a big man on Mulberry Street. Now nobody knows but him that he's a big. Man. I play the whole part. I leave a big tip with every receipt. Uh, I'm so romantic. I'm such a passionate man. Sometimes I panic. What if nobody finds out who I am? Oh, that's sad. That's it's sad. sad, but it's also, I saw, I wanted to get to it because there's uh, now panic disorder <laughs> I'm throwing in on top of like, maybe he has panic attacks. Why can't I lay low? Why can't I say what I mean? I can't stay home and I'm always fighting. He has a lot of psychological disorders at play. Yeah. Um, delusions of grandeur, clearly. In my own heart, I'm a big, sometimes I, <laughs> what if nobody finds out who I am? Um, yeah, what if I die nobody? This is like, uh, I, I think it's like grappling with neighborhood fame. Yeah. I think that's like a New York phenomenon. That we, we didn't grow up with that in Arizona, <laughs> but this is like, oh, you, you know, this, he, the king of the neighborhood, that whole thing, the oh. Pope of Greenwich Village. Right. Um, yeah. Um, this idea that, like, oh, uh, he's the neighborhood celebrity. I'm like, well, we barely had neighborhoods. Yeah, but yeah. growing up, you know, you got a car when you were 16, and then you just went everywhere. <laughs> There's no <laughs> neighborhoods. Um, but he's like, am I a big man on Mulberry Street? I think I am. I tip. I'm a good tipper. Yeah, that's. Is that something? That feels very, I don't, I don't know, Italian. Uh, I did, that feels Italian to me as far as a mark of a good person, or at least very New York. I'm a good yes. tipper. That feels yeah. definitely like, I like to do that too, by the way. That's one I've adopted, but just because I think people work for a living, so you should. Right. But you just write it down at the bottom and put it back in the thing. Yeah. And this character feels like the guy who... It, holds up the tip and does the hand slap and like, there you go, kid. Right. Puts it in his pocket. Did everyone see it? Yeah, puts it in the pocket. Yep. Uh, it's that kind of tipping. Yeah. It's not for them, it's for him. Yeah, in fact, yeah, if there was nobody to see, it wasn't, it's not gonna right. happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then it's full 10%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yeah, be here when there's somebody, but right now here's your $2, yeah. 
Yeah. He doesn't know who he is. I haven't seen from the sensitive side. And then four lines later, I'm so romantic. I'm such a passionate man. Yeah, he, he wants to be seen. Yeah, I think he's lonely. That's for sure. I think there's a, there's a, this there's like reputation, it's reputation panic. That's what he's having. What is he having? He's having reputation panic. Okay. What's <laughs> reputation panic? I think it's, you know, there is that lore of the Pope of Greenwich Village, the big man oh, on yes, Mulder. Okay. Yes. He, he thinks I'm the big man on Mulberry Street, but am I though? Okay. I think I am. Do people know that I am? Um, I tip. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> passionate, but sometimes I panic. What if nobody knows who I am? Yeah. What if I'm just an idiot fucking dorking around on Mulberry Street uh, thinking he's famous and I'm um, just a fucking turd? Yeah, and everybody who sees me just goes, well, there's that idiot and eh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Wow, shoot. I can relate to that. <laughs> we all can. Yeah. That's pretty yeah. Uh, imposter complex. Yeah. But yeah, yeah he's freaking out about whether or not he's a big man on Mulberry Street. Did you ever see that you love Moonlighting? Yes. Um, there was an episode when this album came out, they used three of the songs from this album in like a kind of a musical episode. I don't remember if they sang the song. I think it was just, they just played the music and there were like dance numbers. Okay. They were the, kind of the first show to do all that fourth wall shit. Yeah. And they would have a musical episode or they'd do one that was all black and white for whatever reason. Sure. Um, they did a lot of wacky experimenting. Um, and I don't remember, I kind of want to do a little Google. Yeah, you can do a little, little Google. I can Google while we're talking. Yeah. Um, I want to see. Uh, what the other songs were, for one thing. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. Maybe it was just Big Man on Mulberry Street. Oh, that was the title of the episode. Oh, okay. Um, wow, I wonder what that was all about. Well, it fits, well, it fits his Moonlighting character, that's for sure, because he's a fraud. Right. He's, a, he's, a, he's supposed to be a guy who plays a debonair guy, but he's not really. He's occupying a space created by her, right? Whoa. Remember okay. the plot? Yes. Um, apparently that was the only song used. I'm now going to read you some trivia from the Wikipedia page. <laughs> uh, I did not know this. Um, Billy Joel was inspired to write the song while watching Moonlighting. Oh. He then offered the song to the show's producers. And then the episode was written to use the song as a song and dance number in a dream sequence. Fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. And that's very, that's another common thing with him where he's like, oh, I like that. I'm going to try to do that. <laughs> he would hear like, uh, like a Stevie Wonder song and go, oh, I'm going to write a uh, Leave a Tender Moment Alone and try to make it sound like a Stevie Wonder song. Yes, and and you know who else did that a lot? The Beatles. They would okay. hear the Who song and they would go, this is true, They like um, Helter Skelter was written because they had, the Who had be called, be, been recently called the loudest band in rock and roll. Ah, uh, yeah. And Paul McCartney was like, we're going to make our own loud song. And they made <laughs> Shelter, and that was their reaction. And then, you know, back in the USSR, of course, is just the Beach Boys song, but just a little satirical Beach Boys. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's funny. All kinds of, yeah, that's great because a, a good artist does that anyway, right? Yeah, you use what's around you, you use what's inspiring to you. Yeah, there's um, uh, any number of comedy shows I've been at where somebody has brought up a topic and I didn't like their joke, but sometimes the topic I would go, oh, he, he yeah, here's a, something that's a better joke. <laughs> so I go. <laughs> yeah, oh, he missed. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll get it. Yeah. And yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, but a lot of times I'm not because the audience is real quiet during those ones. So I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> uh, yeah. They're listening. Yeah. <laughs> um, Garth Brooks, who I also like very much, um, is a huge Billy Joel fan. Uh -huh. And he wrote a song intended to sound like a Billy Joel song. It does uh, it. It really does. And then he also taught himself how to play the saxophone so he could play a sax solo in the middle of it. Because that felt like it's a Billy Joel song, there should be a sax solo. Right. That's funny. It, and it would, you know, if it wasn't being sung in like a country voice, it would fit very nicely into uh, the stranger like that era. Yeah. Or everything. Most people who love Billy Joel, that's most people's favorite era. Yeah. I think. I think that's true. Because Billy Joel had the, a thing happen to him in the 80s that happened to a lot of very talented artists coming out of the 70s which is they made their 80s sound because they had to fit the era. And some of it worked. And Billy Joel, not as bad as like Jefferson Airplane. Everything that Jefferson Airplane made in the 80s is oh. garbage. Miserable, yeah. Does not need to exist is, makes me, <laughs> makes me not like any of the band from even before because it's so shitty. Right, it's like, oh, they they're relying all along. Yeah. Yeah, but the great thing, what Billy Joel did as soon as the 80s started was he made a whole album where he tried to sound like Frankie Valli in the Four Seasons. Yep. I was going to say, yeah, that's, that's a, was a good move. And it also makes sense to where, how, how old he was at the time, because then sure. he was really looking at, you know, he was not an old man, but he was hitting that age, probably in his 40s at that point, where you start yep. to remember and think about, Ah, it was pretty fun not being 40, you think? I remember yeah, it was cool. I was a young punk in the 50s. Yeah. Which he yeah. really wasn't. Nope. No. <laughs> he was like mid-60s when he was in high school, right? Yeah. I always find it funny, those music that's meant to sound like the 60s or the 50s, how it always just sounds like the era it's from with a, the tiniest amount of flavor they nobody ever captures it really no. that album is good but you know that it's again broadway it's as if they he was capturing the broadway yeah. version of the 50s with garbage cans on fire and people singing in front of them that kind of thing um it reminds me of something else somebody said about billy joel that uh hurt my feelings but was super true which is that Billy Joel is just musical theater for straight guys. <laughs> and it kind of is. It's kind of every song could be in a, a musical. Yeah. There's yeah. a. Which is great. Absolutely. They're in the song. Um, um, I always blank on the um, scenes for an Italian restaurant, which at some point we'll talk about. Right. But there's a part at which in the middle, he goes, he, the song has just gone through a change. And then he goes, yeah, rock and roll. And it's always <laughs> funny to me because Billy Joel will do that in a lot of songs where he'll say rock and roll. And yeah. they'll go, man, it's funny how much that's not rock and roll. Yeah, it is the least rock and roll. <laughs> if somebody did that in a punk song, you would lose your mind. <laughs> in punk! <laughs> somebody should do that. Somebody should do that. We love punk. We're punkers. Yeah. We're, we're punking out. <laughs> <laughs> now, country music does it constantly and nobody cares. Yeah. And, but I guess that's because that's part of country. Yes. That's part of what it is. Right. Um, but yeah, it's anytime I've, I've said this for years, any song that is about rock and roll, is almost never really rock and roll. And I find that funny. Yes. Except for Joan Jett's uh, I Love Rock and Roll is about as rocking as they come. I it's don't know how she managed to pull that off. Old time rock and roll yeah. is about bigger song. No. I think it's because Joan Jett is great and she's a mean lesbian and it works. Yeah. She can't do anything wrong. Yeah. She's maybe the greatest human being ever.
<laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pitch Dolly Parton for that. Oh, Dolly Parton is the shit. You are right. She's way up there. Um, yeah, she's the she's the weirdest. She's got all this great <laughs> music she wrote. She's got the kindest heart. Yeah, and she is super smart. And they're like, "What are you doing, Dolly? What are you she's doing?" She's fucking flying under the radar. Is what she's doing. Yep, and people like people come around. People come around because people suddenly go, oh, did you see her on Colbert? <laughs> right, right. That's I mean, not going to happen to a lot of musicians when they're in their late 70s. Nope. Making Colbert cry? Now, yeah. I get the impression that's not that hard, but still. <laughs> I don't think it's that hard. <laughs> he's, he's a softie if there ever was one. He's got a it's good old true. heart on him. <laughs> yeah, the good old heart and he loves his wife. Stephen Colbert is a good fella. Yeah. Which is what this podcast is all about. <laughs> <laughs> Episode two of Stephen Colbert is nice. <laughs> uh, I, I would listen to that too. I really yeah. love these people talking about how Steve's nice. <laughs> I'm so romantic. I'm such a passionate man. Sometimes I panic. What if nobody finds out who I am? Oh, well, that's a universal lyric. What if nobody finds out who I am? I, that's everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the central fear. Um, mine, uh, yeah, mine is like there's a part of me that I'm like, I really want people to know who I am, but boy, I don't know. I think they're going to be very disappointed because because <laughs> I'm a very nice person. Like I'm really good at like uh, social niceties for the most part. I'm pretty good and true. and I do care about people's feelings and I I do that. And then if you were to get really underneath it all, you'd go, oh, oh, Jimmy's got some sludge down there. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, true of everyone. I'm kind of like, I'm happy if, uh, with people not knowing who I am. <laughs> That's okay. I know. And there's like a couple of people who know. And yeah. I don't need like a whole cadre. Yeah. <laughs> like, just if you know what uh, I can do, yeah. that's enough. Yeah. That's fine. I think this is what I'll say about you, and I think this is pretty accurate. I think you actually are a big man on Mulberry Street, aren't you? Jim. Come on. That's real nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had Aperol spritzes down on Mulberry Street, Sue and I did, and it was very lovely. And the uh -huh. waiter was the nicest man. Um, there are actually a lot of Italians working in the Italian restaurants there, which is different from uh, the rest of the city sometimes. Um, and this guy, must have told us like the whole history of the building, the restaurant, <laughs> the area, every movie that was shot there. And like we ordered like, you know, $25 worth of stuff, but he was so nice and went on and on and on. And um, I felt like a big man on Mulberry Street. And you were at that moment. Damn it, you were. That that's moment. awesome. Now that's, it. Yeah, that's fantastic. And guy does that you know that he just actually does love his neighborhood he really does yeah older he, fella a younger fella kind of younger but then he was like i've been working at this restaurant for 17 years was, what uh, okay um italian my, my friend gilmore rizzo gilmore oh. rizzo very italian he, uh he's probably a little older than me now and he's gorgeous. And I don't know what it is about Italian blood, but he's gorgeous. And, and one is his hair has gotten all peppery and it's even better. And it's all, you know, and it's, you know, he's got a, he's still kind of got a little pompadour that I don't even know if he does it on purpose. I just think that just happens. Yeah. Italian hair just knows. Yeah. And, uh, and he is super opinionated about Italian food. Great. And, and I bet you that waiter, as nice as he was to you, if at some point he's somewhere eating shitty Italian food, he's got something to say. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And rightfully should. And rightfully yes. should. Earned. Yeah. Whereas, earned, like, earned contempt. Yes, absolutely. Whereas, look, I'm most of my family Irish. We have no right to any opinion about food at all. That's true. Uh, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Irish have contributed nothing of culinary value to the world. I want to hear your your take on sweaters. I want to hear. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> but your take on anything edible, shut yeah. the fuck up. Don't give me your sauce recipe. Yeah. 
because I know part of it is, hey, we get a thing of prego. <laughs> <laughs> I know for sure you go, and then you're you're one of those people who says you cook, and you go, well, I use prego as as the base. Right then, I cook. Yeah, then I uh, I had all kinds of stuff. Really, do you? Yeah, do you really. I don't think you do. Yeah. I think just the fact that you put mushrooms in it doesn't mean you cooked. Yeah, and also that means you ruined it. <laughs> in my humble opinion. Yeah. Um, now, do I have a tri a weekly trivia question assignment? Yes. That's terrible news because I had not thought of one. <laughs> um, but here's a stupid one that relates to the song. And I think the answer is very obvious, but it was it was more of an interesting fact than it is a difficult question. Do you know why it's called Canal Street? Um, because it was built on the canals? It was a canal. Oh, it was a canal. There was a point where it was a canal. That's all. That's not, that's not stupid at all. That's actually kind of interesting. It's an easy question, uh, but an interesting fact. And a thing I didn't think of until someone told me that. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's a very good reason to name it that. And uh, Wall Street, as it turns out, same answer. Used to be a canal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good joke. It used to be a wall. It was a dividing wall between the Dutch and the English. That, 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 by the way, is a classic Alex Bay kind of joke. I like that joke. Oh, I wish I had invented that structure. Yeah, but, you do that structure really well, though. From the nearby Catskill Mountains, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jim, I'm dying to know what song you picked for next time. OK, cool. Um, all right. The Ballad of Billy the Kid. Oh, my god. <laughs> <laughs> And here's what I, people who listen to this show, if you've never heard this song, do yourself a favor and listen to this song in wonder at how little research went into the life of Billy the Kid <laughs> for this song. It's incredible. It's got um, um, more New York location mentions, which I always like in a song. <laughs> and I just got to say, as a preview, I just want to say, even before Google, even before Wikipedia, even before all of that, the life of Billy the Kid's pretty well known. <laughs> it's true. Except to Billy Joel. Yeah. <laughs> really? Uh... <laughs> so we'll get into that. It's really funny to me. But the, the music is lovely. The music, music is lovely. Has, yeah, it's got a lot of, uh, it's got a little musical theater going on, I think, in it. Good amount of musical theater. It's got um, some Foley effects, I think, I, with the, like coconut halves to do the horse hooves. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on which version you have, there's it's on two albums. It's on Songs in the Attic, and it's on um, the first album, right? Is it? What is the first album? Why can't I think of it? Long Island. Uh, shit. Let's look that up. Um, Cold Spring Harbor. Okay. That's what it's on. Yes. So there are two versions to check out. <laughs> and uh, the one on Cold Spring Harbor has a lot less energy in it. <laughs> yeah. It makes it kind of funny to listen to. Uh, before we go, tell me what that's a painting of behind you. That is a painting. Uh, it's an elephant. Oh, yeah. Now I see it. Uh, painted by an L.A. graffiti artist um, who was a homeless heroin addict and a graffiti artist and then started doing canvases and made a lot of money. Um, and is no longer homeless and is doing OK, I hope? I think so. Okay, I good. haven't heard much lately, <laughs> but I think uh, things are okay. But I love it because the tusks are that classic graffiti shape, those crazy right angles on the tusks. That's awesome. So because so I haven't been able to see most of the painting up until now it's been behind you. Yeah. So what it looked like for a while was like um, some internal organ getting cut with a <laughs> razor. <laughs> it's yeah it's got that color and that's fantastic that what it really is is something nice it's an elephant yeah 
Oh, like, that's a nice piece. It's a real cool piece. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. You spent some money on some art, didn't you? A little a bit. Piece. Yeah. Not a lot. But, but you love a thing, so you bought it. Um, next week, I'll show you a piece of art I own that it actually costs, because I've gotten, I don't buy art because I like art and I'm not qualified to <laughs> keep it good. Gotcha. I don't okay. trust, I, I, like, I don't buy like paintings and stuff because I don't trust myself because the art deserves a good home. I, I'm not joking. <laughs> it does deserve a good home. But I have a sculpture that I'm qualified to keep because it's a sculpture. So the right. worst that can happen is my wife will brain me with it once she figures stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> and then it served its purpose, really. But up until then, it's an interesting piece. I'll show it to you next time while we also talk about the Ballad of Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <I> <laughs>